Hello and welcome to the Rocket League overview for both the NACIF California Fall Open and the NACIF CIF Esports Initiative. Uh, this is going to be the same video for both the Fall Open and the Spring CIF Initiative, mostly because the setup protocols for Rocket League are remaining basically the same. Uh, first up, here's a quick overview of what the Rocket League looks like for the seasons. You've got Rocket League is going to have three players. You can have three players and three substitutes for each roster. For the Fall Open, your matches are going to be best of five until you hit the top four, and then they're going to be best of seven. And in the CIF Esports Initiative season starting in January, the matches are going to be best of five until we hit the postseason when we're going to bump them up to best of seven. The substitution policy for this game is that you may substitute players in between games, but once a game starts, you cannot substitute a player. So even if one of your players disconnects, or if you have the wrong player join in between games, as soon as the first three have joined, those are the three players for that game. If you do have the wrong player join, and it's less than five seconds until it starts, then you can swap them out if you really have to, but we really don't want to have any situations where it's 4v3, or if you have the wrong player in. I have linked in the slide deck the Rocket League rulebook, which is going to be the main source of all of the competition information you need. I'm going to do a quick overview of that at the end of this video. As far as creating your team rosters within UGC, this is kind of a visual of the process. So within UGC, you're going to click on clubs and teams. You're going to click on the settings wheel. And that's going to take you into the team settings. Or if you're on the page that's managing the team directly, you can click on team management and then click over from practices into settings. Once you're there with your team, you're going to set your roster by filling in the about section. I have an example here of what that looks like. You want to have all of their main IDs and the accounts that they play on. So for example, this one would be an account named Dunks Only. They play on Switch and their highest rank is Platinum 3. So make sure that you can have their names and ranks. You can look these up on rocketleague.tracker.network and kind of just verify that your players are who they say they are and that they have the IDs that they mentioned. When you're done, be sure to click Save. Let me hop into a quick demo of what that looks like. So from the main UGC page, you've got your communities that you're following and then the links here. So I'm going to navigate to clubs and teams. I'm going to go down and I'm going to find my Rocket League team. And you're welcome to update these headers as you see fit. Um, I just have them named here because it's easier. You're going to click on this little settings wheel right here. And then under details, I'm going to go down. I'm going to quickly adjust my team nag, team name to ACMS Rocket League. Uh, you can just make it the acronym of your school if you want. And then you just go in and you edit your roster right here. Now, this is just a text field where you can type things in. You can put test player, whatever their names are. And then once you've put that in, we kind of want to follow the same format. Name, platform they play on, and then their highest ranked account. So you can put your roster and then your substitutes. And then click save and then it should populate this. If you wanna see what the Rocket League Tracker website looks like, you can go ahead and pop this up in here. Depending on which one you are searching for, you can search based on their Epic Games platform, their Steam username, Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, whatever. I think mine is this, just to kind of show you what that looks like. Maybe it's here. I don't remember what my uh, profile looks like. Ah, oh, there we go. So you look at the profile here, you can kind of see the high rank of each player. So in this one, this is my personal account. And then in my roster, I would then put that my highest player rank in either for 1v1, 3v3, I would put that my highest rank is platinum one in this case. You don't have to go so far as to put the divisions, although you can if you'd like to. Um, if you'd also like to list out the 2v2 or 3v2, that's fine. But the most important is that you have their highest rank because the difference in a player that can play in platinum or diamond is very different than a player who can play in bronze. So you can pull that rank down, type it in here, 
and I'll just put mine in there as an example. Mine is on Steam, and it would be Platinum 2, Platinum 1 actually. Click Save, and then later on if I go back to this team, and I refresh it, my About page will have my roster right here. So that's it for the roster setup. Um, as far as setting up your rosters within UGC, it's pretty straightforward. Again, we don't need player real names, just their in-game IDs. For the match procedures, what you're going to do is you're going to find your opponent on the UGC page. Um, I can't demo that right now because the league's not started. But one way is to look under your Teams tab, and it will look something like this. If you look on your Teams tab on the right, I kind of set up a demo match here just to kind of show what the match looks like. It does say it's team versus team on myself here, so I can click into that. Um, once we have the Discord link initiated, initiated, you'll be able to click View Discord, and you'll be able to see the coach discords here. Um, again, I can't really do that on the demo, but you'll be able to connect your Discord account here. And then you'll be able to see your team. Uh, the chat channel should be populated and active, so you can see the message there. But you'll be able to see the team, see their coach, and then go in and connect with them that way. Once you've connected with your coach, uh, the home team, which is the top team in the bracket, or the first team that's listed, is going to set up the game as described in the rulebook and on the next slides, and I'll show you that including the name, password, team colors, and team names. Uh, quick note, just from experience, the best password and names work best when they are all one case, such as team versus team, the password, whatever it may be. All lowercase is better. The home team is going to communicate to the away team the lobby information. Once both teams are all in the lobby, including the spectators, the teams will join the side simultaneously. Um, you can coordinate this using on-demand voice channels or in Discord, or what most of our teams do is they just watch for the other team to join. Once you see one team join the other side, your whole team should jump in immediately. All players need to join within the first five seconds and before contact is made with the ball. Otherwise, the game needs to be remade. I'm going to cut to a short video here that kind of demos that. Here's a clip of what teams joining the game will look like. Um, once you have the team set up, you'll see eight players or six in the lobby depending on if you have spectator accounts or not once the teams see all of them in the lobby the process will sort of look like this i've got a recording that is muted so what's going to happen is they'll watch for it and then when one team sees the other one all three join then the other team will all three join and then afterward the spectator can hop in they can click spectate and then they will join into the game and then the game will begin Sort of like this. Uh, game settings as described in the rulebook are all listed right here. You've got DFH Stadium or any of the other arenas that are listed down below. Uh, lobby name, team size, bot difficulty. All of these settings are here in the rulebook. You can also see a visual of what that looks like when you go to create a private match. I'm going to demo that in just a second, but you'll have soccer, DFH, 3v3, no bots, US West. You'll set the name and password. The team settings, if you're setting up the teams based on colors, you're going to set home team, away team with their school colors if you want to use that or just use the default colors for home and away. Uh, don't set it up to any odd names or inappropriate names or any colors that are other than the school colors or the default. And if a team wants to use default colors, then you'll just remake the lobby with that. Uh, the mutator settings, these should just be default. Uh, the one thing that you'll want to make sure is that the series length, uh, you can technically set it to five games and then play out your best of five or set it to seven games and play out your best of seven. But what we found is that if there's an error in the game or if one of the games becomes invalid for a reason that both coaches agree, you don't want to have to go completely remake the whole lobby. Um, so we found that just setting the series link to unlimited and then keeping track of the games one has been the best way to do that. Uh, five minute match settings, defaults, everywhere else. Make sure none of these mutators are off. Any of these mutators that are off or changed from the default are going to result in the game being invalid. These include gravity, extra boost, ball bounciness, any of those things that kids like to play in custom games. 
a quick overview of our expectations. We really want to minimize forfeits and teams that are tardy, and we're also trying to be respectful of the other team's time. So in the rulebook, this is laid out more thoroughly, but if your team is 10 minutes late to the start of their games, they're going to forfeit the first game of the set. And if your team is more than 20 minutes late to the start, they will forfeit the entire week. Um, if a team forfeits multiple times during a season, they may be barred from future competitions or just have that team not allowed to compete. Uh, as far as Rocket League goes, you may use in-game emotes, but again, excessive spam and bad manners can result in disciplinary action. If you have any problems with those or if you see any of that happening, submit screenshots or game recordings. Um, if you're utilizing party voice chat, it's recommended that you have a spectator account and that you are recording all audio and gameplay to provide evidence in case anything happens. I'm going to jump into a quick demo of the actual match creation here within the Rocket League client. So what you want to do and you want to first, I would recommend forming a party with all of your players. So whatever platform you're playing on, if you select create party and then invite all of your team to it, you'll have a full party and then you can all join at once kind of minimizes some of the lobby creation issues. When they go to create their game, they're going to hit play. They're going to go down into custom games. They're going to create a private match. Now, if you are the team that is joining, you're going to join a private match using a name and password. You're going to type exactly what that name and password provided to you by the home team was. If you are the one creating the game, you're going to create the private match. Now my settings are all here, but like, let's say they were in some weird setting, what you want to look for. You want to make sure that your mode is set to soccer. Your arena is DFH. Make sure the team size is set to 3v3. No bots in the games. US West for the servers. Make sure that it stays where you are locally. Name and password is the setting you want for the private match. As far as team settings go, you could leave home and away as your default, or you could just set these to the school name and colors as I demoed earlier. And you can make their team name and color based on what the other team wants. And then your mutator settings, the easiest way to do is just click restore defaults all the way down here. And it should set back to whatever the default games are. And I was mentioning, you can set the series length to best of five or best of seven. But again, if you have a match that becomes invalid for some reason and both coaches want to remake, then you don't want to have to keep, you don't want the series to end without being able to recreate it. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to then join. You're going to create the match. You're going to communicate to the other team that the lobby is ready and then they will join in. I'm hoping this has been helpful. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. This slide deck along with the links is here on the bit.ly link right here. I recommend joining the office hours. And I did mention I was going to do a quick overview of the rule books and where those can be found. So if you're on the NACEF page right here and you scroll down and find Rocket League, the fall open, league, uh, open rule book is right here. The one for CIF is here. They are very, very similar for Rocket League. There's not a whole lot of differences between the two titles. Um, I did try to keep the branding pretty clear so you know which one you're looking at. The big differences come in terms of eligibility and the difference in the fall being a double elimination tournament and the spring, which is 10 weeks or 10 rounds of competition. Uh, as you go through here, I'm just going to do a quick high level overview of this. Um, it's got kind of a one page summary of what the match protocols look like. You've got links to your tech equipment. Event timelines are in here as well. A quick reminder, please make sure you can commit to playing on the default time. Do not rely on reschedules in order to participate. Uh, team registration information, all of it is in here. Uh, tech requirements, the dates, you need to have your roster listed. This is gonna be the guidebook for all of the questions that you may have. If you have questions on the tournament format or the team size, uh, how you list on your roster, how you schedule the forfeit protocols, rules on in-person, you can play in person or remote. It's up to your school site. Uh, 
you need to start communicating at least 24 hours prior to the start of your match with your opponent uh, whenever possible. Uh, there's rules on communications here. You should, if you can, utilize the on-demand voice channel within Discord. It's kind of the expected means of communication between the teams. Um, if, you're, if you have an opponent that doesn't respond to communication, the protocols for that are listed in here. Uh, lobby setup, all the settings are here. The list of all the arenas that you can choose from are listed here in the rulebook. The match play protocols, the flow is basically how I listed earlier. It's pretty straightforward for Rocket League. Um, you've got rules regarding restarts. You can't have AIs. You can't start the game with less than three players. Um, if your game lasts more than 30 seconds and then a player disconnects, then it is considered valid. The disconnected player can return, but no substitution can return. Uh, this should cover pretty much all of the if this happens, then that happens questions. It is recommended that you have at least two substitutes. If there's disconnects that occur, it's listed here as well as technical information for this. You've got PC requirements, you've got recommended, and then recommended here, just input devices that you need. Again, I hope that's been helpful. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out via office hours. Um, feel free to reach out via office hours. They're all listed on the website and reach out via email if you have any further questions. Thanks, I hope this has been helpful.